Artyom. Wake up, dear. Is he up yet? Artyom, the Colonel wants you on the breach. See you later. Come on, wake up. Oh, look at the guns on the wall there. Sorry, Anna, I'm more interested in that. <laughs> Our little collection there, that's kind of insane. Wow, this place looks cool. Nice. Wow, this is actually super cool. Yeah, it's actually pretty sweet. I like it. I wonder if you gather more stuff if it gives them a better The suits like the hazmat suits fixed our uniforms some of our people are starting to look pretty ragged you know no duke's plate carrier won't hold the back plate anymore and he jokes that he's lucky he's not the front one or else his doors will be in danger regardless i am turning this little gang back into a real army oh my god really well, that's it i bragged enough and won't waste any more of your time the colonel summoned you. Well, yeah. I have stuff to do too. You guys are fast to break gear, but none too expedient to fix it. Oh no, we did a pretty good job cleaning our gear. Oh, and just give me a second. Okay, so what would you like I'm gonna to listen to the Christian. dialogue. Oh, Uncle Teddy. Father, do you have a sewing machine? No, I don't. But how are you going to fix the suits then? <laughs> like everyone else, I take a thread and a needle, and I use a sail stitch. Wow, cool! Can you teach me? I sure can, but later. I've got work to do. Will you let me fix Sam's rifle strap? <laughs> That's you. awesome. Sure thing. Oh, but under supervision. Sam is so strict, you know. And Uncle Sam isn't strict at all. He's kind. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look here. I'll show you once. Now we do this. Got that. It's actually not half bad don't animation for it. Here. I don't think we need to wa watch yes. him doing the sewing. I'm just kind of curious if there's any dialogue in the back here. It looks like people, their bunks set up. Oh, nice. Artyom, come on in and have a seat. Stepan's putting on a live performance here. Yeah, dude. So, Artyom, are you up for a gym? Come on, pick the guitar up. Nice. I've heard about this. What do I press, though? Is it hold down E? No, that's not working. Oh no. <laughs> what have I done? There we go. I think I pressed D. The animation's totally not lined up. <laughs> you think with their attention to detail they would get the animation for this part done, but...
I don't know where to look. Where do I look? Thank you, Stepan. So if I hold down E, does it let me get up? Sorry to ask, Katya, but Nastya's father. He's dead, isn't he? Does Nastya know? He is. I tried keeping it a secret. Told her he left for the market. Around three days passed, and I still kept it in. I just sat there with a needle in my hand and didn't see anything. It was all black before my eyes. And then she snuggles up to me and says, You should cry, Ma. You will feel better. Sini used to say it. So I cried and cried. She knows. She knows it all. I'm sorry, Katya. I'm so sorry. Let me tell you how we ended up at the bridge. Oh yeah, I want to hear this. We used to live in northeast from here. Quite close if you go in a straight line. But it took us a month. Everything's bombed to rubble out there. Yermak asked me and I told him. Sini used to say there are lots of military factories out there. Not just military, of course. General industry. And now you can't pass through there even with filters. The radiation is so high. No railway either. Just crater upon crater. We were quite far, but our counter still went crazy. One route appeared intact. There was nothing to bomb. So we used that one, thinking we'd get further to the west, but... But of course they did not let us cross the bridge with the diesel. They said it was satanic. They were ready to let us stay if we gave them the diesel to cleanse it. So we stayed. And then we could leave, even if we wanted. That old goat, Father Silentius, brainwashed everyone, so they would just pray and bow nonstop. They broke our diesel down with their bare hands and threw it into the river. Purification. And on top of it, they gave us trouble for not helping them. Senia went to check what was going on, and there were only locals there. Because Silentius at the Skatina had sent our people away to test them. He said that if they wanted to be truly accepted, they had to defeat a demon. Senia went to stop them. But it was too late. He only found burnt rags. And then they sent him to do the same. He never came back. Katya, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Well, you really didn't. What's done is done. <clears throat> <sighs> it kind of got so glum in here. Hmm. Perhaps you, Stepan, could play us something. Sure thing! Nice. I wonder if that was the body that was on top of the tower. Like, I feel like... They would have him do well. Oh, stop it already! <laughs> well, what did you expect? <laughs> so, what's up with your plate carrier? Tokarev was mad. Ah, uh, it's a long story. Come on, out with it! Well, there I am, sitting on a beam, looking at Artyom, milling about below. Oh, you are so full of it! <laughs> Artyom did most of the work! <laughs> 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 that he did, uh, yeah, he did. But you don't have to interrupt my lies. You asked me about the vest yourselves. Alright, go on. So, I see Artyom get to the door, and I think it's time I came down. So I do. But something just holds on to me. What else? How should I know? It's dark. Nobody around. But I can't move. And those locals kept going on about Tsar something. So I thought I was in a kind of a bind. So? So I just unfastened the safety and let down. There was that shed down there. The roof was uh, kind of close. Uh, uh, and what about the Tsar? <laughs> yeah. 
He's a great guy. He all came out on top of the game. And that calls for what? A trick. You nailed it. You truly are one of us now, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be joining us? Nah, not now. I'll have some at dinner. Well, you'll have to catch up then. Sure thing. Anyways, we will just have a little as a warm-up now. <laughs> Cheers. Do they not offer me one? Great. Ah, that's some good stuff. Oh, I can sit down here. Can I? Uh, hey guys, I hold down D. There we go. About. What does everyone expect of this trip? Personally, I want to come back and tell Sveta of my adventures, so that she'd look at me with her huge gray eyes without blinking and keep saying, you're such a hero, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so you're expecting heroics and scars. That works. And why did you come? <laughs> well, my heart is aching for true romance. But in the metro, all women want a solid relationship, a reliable husband, a real provider. <laughs> Enough of that smug smile. It's unbearable. Not that I've had much better luck here so far. As soon as Katia came aboard, Stefan started cooing around her like a peacock. Uh, I think you guys all did, from what I remember. You should be happy. Katya is a tough girl. You'd be under her thumb in no time. <laughs> that is unlikely. I'm not the kind of man to upstage his friend in a contest for a lady. Especially when that friend promises to break my arm! <laughs> <laughs> I think that was in uh, hearing distance, that comment there. <laughs> I'll catch my stroke of luck soon enough. Oh my god. That's gross. How about you, Demir? What made you go? Well, uh, at first I just went along with you guys, uh, the Colonel. But even then I thought, this is my chance to make my dream come true. Oh, he's A from Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan oh, people. okay. But first... We must come back to Moscow, because it isn't fair. People must know that they've put up with enough. They are free. They can live outside now. What do you think about that, idiot? I'm with you, Demir. Yet, freedom is not so simple. There was this freedom fighter, Che Guevara. Oh, wow. He died under 40. Comrade Mao, whose book you've been perusing on the other hand, was a strict ruler but lived a long life. Well, we should have expected that from you. <laughs> the weird thing, though, is that you are called idiot. <laughs> I know. It's by his own choice. Because he's so fond of Chekhov. <laughs> Chekhov, too, of course. But it's Dostoevsky for the most part, Sam, my friend. <laughs> sure. I read the book, too. 
Just that I mix them up a lot. Chekhov wrote about that son of Austerlitz, a wounded officer. Powerful imagery. <laughs> you are just killing me. <laughs> How about you, Uncle Sam? Got dreams? You know, I just want to ride my board again. Oh, really? Spark a joint up on a beach. <laughs> catch that wave. <laughs> Deep inside, under a grizzled metro dweller, there's still a relaxed Californian inside. Yeah, boy. Ah, get out of here. California. <laughs> so, you know, before Dad talked me into joining the Corps, I used to wear my hair long. He told me they'd make a decent citizen out of the total disappointment that I was, and sent me to college once I was discharged. I joined, and they sent me to the Middle East. Wow, so do you hope your guys would pick you up? I don't see them around. Yeah, I don't hold my breath for my guys. Once this mission's over, I'll submit my discharge papers. I'll reach the ocean, and there, find a ship maybe? Oh yeah. Just imagine it. You arrive on that ship, and they go like, Ah, the Russians are coming! <laughs> <laughs> you are one of us now. You don't really need to go anywhere. At least don't put your Ushanka on. They will sink you on sight. <laughs> I won't. Though I will take my balalaika with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, who has any expectations for our reception at Yamantau? These guys keep on going, uh, don't they? Expectations at Yosh are quite obvious, huh? Scantily clad junior officer ladies on the rolling red carpet. <laughs> I'm a simple guy. How about you guys? Well, uh, I hope they will answer a few questions. For example. If there is not a single American within hundreds of miles from Moscow, save for our friend Samuel here, why stay on the ground? I'd put it a bit differently. Did you, dearest High Command gentlemen, know that we in Moscow had to spend 20 years on the ground? Huh, by all means, you can ask those while I'm enjoying my briefing with the junior officer ladies, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I'm in the mood for a road trip. Oh, we got ourselves a true traveler here. Yeah, we will have to live and see. You are right. All right, are they done? I think they might be done. I'm doing this for you, Erst. You, you were saying you wanted to hear some of the backstory. I figured that. Let me pass, please, Artyom. Um. Okay. <laughs> Here's one of my favorites. He keeps on playing. No way. These guys are just gonna keep on hanging out, looks like. He's gonna keep on playing his guitar. Can we talk with Duke or is he just yeah, he's just gonna go to sleep? Do you say something? No, they're just talking. Wait, we can go out back? Can we go there too? No way. Where is this? Oh, this is to the front. Oh, okay. Hold on. Before we go uh, check in with Miller. I just want to see if there's anything in the very, very back. Oh, it's the car. Oh, God. Smoking indoors. Gross. This is one mean smoke. Damn, this is rough. Well, don't you see the sign? I don't think I can open that, can I? No, it's not. I haven't got anywhere to go. Well, you are the right kind of guys. I mean, you, the Colonel, Duke. That guy did a swell job on that bridge. And now he's bragging about it like a child. He's a child, really, not a child. But he's good. 
So, uh, yeah, what did I want to say? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. You you people accepted me, and, and I... Uh, I'm a simple guy. I, I, I will pay that debt back, okay? So, how do you like it out here after your tunnels? Freedom, huh? <laughs> no response. Sure thing. So much space. It feels too empty to me, though. Just reeds and ruins and those damn mutants. Hate them. <laughs> and you were living in a tower surrounded by them. You guys are gonna see the government. So, Bratuha, don't be mad, but just tell me, what the hell do you even need them for? Well, of course, it might be interesting to take a look, but throughout all of my rambling, I only met two kinds of ex-government people. Dead ones and gang leaders. And let me tell you, the latter are much worse than your typical bandit. They just have to make a speech before doing something off. So what I mean, I, I didn't really care about the government even before the war, much less now, when everything is long since gone to shit. So what for, really? It's a good I'm point. I'm a simple man, Artyomich. I told I'm with you, that means I'm with you for the long haul. But I'd much rather find a nice place to live at than go see the government. Of course, they could give us luxury bunkers or something. More like well, make us go think, kill mutants and gang cool. leaders. Go get warmed up a bit. I'll smoke some more. I have stuff to think about. Or just stay. <laughs> we have enough space now. I mean, you are blowing smoke in our face, so I think we're gonna go. And secondhand smoke right there. Pretty irresponsible, Crest. Come on, you could be doing that outside. It's kind of messed up. But then again, I mean, it is the apocalypse. If you take a couple years off someone's life, is that really such a big deal? He keeps on playing. Alright, I'm gonna now go check up on Miller. I don't know, that this has been going on a while. I might do the spring cutscene as its whole own episode, I'm not sure. Depending on how long it goes, I might do that. Because I thought it was just going to be like a couple minutes. Well, that's brutal. Well, hello, my brother in arms. You the bottom up, huh? <laughs> I guess someone's got to do it, right? You know, I was thinking they were having this run on like gas or something, but if it's coal, I suppose we could sustain ourselves doing that. That's actually... I hadn't thought about that. Listen! I had a talk with the Ark! And all thanks to Dokoran, he got the decoder working. Oh, interesting. Ark, come in. Come in, Ark. It's over. Hey, this is Ark. Hey, uh, identify yourself. Uh, over. This is Colonel Skittleslaw on the coast. I'm in command of a special operations force. We have received your signal and are currently heading your way. Still copy is over. Yes, yes. A hear you loud and clear. Who am I talking to? How do I address you? A deputy chief of communications department, Major Ivanov. At a moment. Oh, yes, Major. I understand that the checkup is in order. Great, Colonel. Um, Emelico? Simply capital. I am sorry for the lack of trust, but as you know, the situation is dire and the enemy is always ready to strike. I do understand, Winter, and I'm... I hope that you can tell the leadership that my people are true to their duty. I don't know if we're talking about the same enemy. My, no, it's not my breath. As far as I can see, there have been no enemy encounters 
Okay, that was so, interesting. You get this now, you doubting Thomas. <laughs> I'm so excited, my hands are still shaking. The minister himself. This is incredible. By the way, Arthur, you should take a look at the map. Okay, I've completely forgotten about how this works, but. As you can see, we are heading almost straight to the Yamantar complex. Katya and Chris tell me that the line there is in decent condition. Surprising, really, taking into account the number of priority targets there. So we can hope for a smooth sailing from here and right to the very destination. It's not even that far, but our speed depends on the state of the track. So I think it's going to take us quite some time to get there. So, okay. Yermak, where were we? You were saying it's all about the results. Yes, these soft-bellied attitudes must stop. The ends do justify the means. Well, I don't object. But not all ends can be called just. Exactly. And this is why, why I have been waiting for a chance like this for ages. And now everything seems to be coming together. It's the government. Don't you understand? Oh, but of course. Hmm. You don't seem to quite grasp the importance, which is unexpected, especially after the news you just heard. <clears throat> yes, well, say there is a government. So what? We spent so many years apart, so why worry now? Ah, but don't you see? They probably knew nothing about us. With the sheer power of enemy strikes directed at Moscow, they never expected so many of us to survive. And now, now we, we get to, get to tell them Moscow still lives. And not only that, it also preserved a functioning civilization. Do you get that? All these years, we were fighting a losing battle for mere survival. And now, and now we have a new what would that goal be? You don't get this, do you? The command center should have all of the command and control networks. All the intelligence. They should know where all the nukes hit. Have complete fallout maps. They have everything. Information rules the world. And Metro is chock full of people. Put two and two together, we could repopulate the country. Yeah, and of course not at once. First, we might have to take the country back. But we'll be doing this under the direction of a real government. People with all the necessary skills. And in the end, we will break out of the underground dead end we are in. Uh, it would be nice, sure. By the way, I meant to ask for some time now. How did you learn about the Yamantau bunker? Yeah, it is a good point. Oh, the information about the Ark project I have is beyond a doubt. I'm saying this as a GRU officer. I had colleagues working there, preparing evacuation plans. So I've been briefed into it officially. So, mm. now we just have to get there. And we will. We will. The journey won't be easy, though. <laughs> we were never looking for an easy way. Yes, I've been thinking about that for a long time. The Central Industrial District, a priority target. Katya did confirm my suspicions. The tracks might have survived partially, but the state they're in, though, is most likely terrible. I think we'll have to fix sections of the track. Sure, there will be side tracks. What do you 
nothing could have happened in the relatively intact territories in the meantime. I think we're on a looping a track question. visually. Well, we are going to learn pretty soon. Yes. Yes, that, that we will. Yeah, we've already gone by these buildings. It's just looping it. Or this train station. Okay, so they're done talking. Let's go ahead and go to the map, and I think we have to hold down D. There we go. And now I'll activate the next section. We are approaching the Yamantau bunker, the final destination of our long journey. Direct radio contact with the bunker has completely dissolved Miller's resentment towards me for destroying our previous lives. He is eagerly anticipating the meeting with the Minister of Defense he was promised. Probably such things are important for a career officer. The people, though, are less interested. They are asking important questions. Where are the occupying forces? Why is there just wilderness and people gone wild around? What's stopping the government from restoring the country? What was being done in the last 20 years? Miller believes that we'll get all the answers. He will be pardoned, as well as Anna and I. And we will all return home to the metro. Hmm. Interesting. I want to basically just get all the cutscenes done. So we're going to keep on going until we're done with cutscenes. And then we'll start the next episode wandering in the next open world environment or mission environment. Yeah, we did just get a quick save right here, and it looks like this is going to be an open world part. So I think I'm going to end this episode here. Thank you for joining me. This has been Orange One.